Hey everyone, welcome to another custom cable guide. Today I'm going to take you through something that is absolutely vital if you're planning on doing custom cables because if you don't know how to do this, you're not going to be able to do custom cables at all, pretty much no matter what power supply you have because almost every power supply has at least one of these things. So what I'm talking about is number one, split wires, but there are other things that you run into. You know, I get so many people who are trying to do their own custom cables and you know then they contact me and they say like you know everything's going fine I'm having a lot of fun but I've come across this split wire or two wires twisted around each other or capacitors on a wire well the caps and twisted wires are easy enough just remove them you know just don't run any twisted wires and yeah just cut the caps off they are there for harmonic distortion and other things you guys can have a talk about that you know the experts in the comments can discuss that why they're there but you know I've removed them from hundreds of power supplies and I've never had any real issues with harmonic distortion or anything else so that leaves us with split wires now I have three cable kits here the one on the end here I believe is for the AX1200i then we have the HX750, so obviously two Corsair power supplies, and then this one is for the Inwin 1065 watt. It's actually going into the Inwin Tau, and I've even added the cable which is for the touch panel and the lighting. And this usually goes on an extension, a really ugly extension, not sleeved, you know, that plugs into your 24 pin cable so that you can get this functionality, but I've hidden it. On the power supply end where it's going to be out of sight and yeah then the customer will be able to get this functionality with beautiful MDPCX carbon BTI cables all of this is MDPCX sleeve of course but anyway the reason I'm bringing this up is because you can see what I've done here to actually make this possible and I've run two wires into the one pin so this is something that you can do in certain situations. It is a little bit difficult because it's going to be a lot tighter in the connector. You have to use heat shrink. You can't do heat shrinkless when you have two. You know, you've got to push the heat shrink right back because there's not enough room. It's, yeah, it's quite difficult, very difficult to get them all the same length. But yeah, that's not split wires. This is a split wire here. So this is what you're going to run into all the time. There was only one for the Inwin 1065 watt only one for the HX750 and how many for the that's if this even is for an AX1200 I've forgotten I did this you know like a week ago I've done so many different things oh, okay we have three splits so yeah you can see that it's pretty common and over here we have one for the AX860i and yeah it has a split as well okay so Definitely something that is very common. So let's look at how to actually do this. Well, you are going to need a soldering iron. Helping hands are always good. A set of these things. So what you're going to have is, you know, you're going to have a bunch of wires which you've already cut because you're already sleeving. And, you know, usually I do all of the normal straight wires first. I plug them all into the connectors put the cable combs on, finish the, the whole cable, except for the splits, and then I do the splits last. And that's actually what I've done here. So I'm doing splits right now for this kit for the HX750, because yeah, I missed that. There's not just splits on the 24 pin, there's also splits on the PCIe, which is extremely common. You're gonna find this on every power supply just about. Although not on this one, but you know, the pinouts are all different every time. Even, you know, you have the same brand, Corsair, a lot of their pinouts are different across their different power supplies. But anyway, so we have on the 8-pin PCIe, the top is positive and the bottom is negative. It might actually be the other way around. But then on this end here, it's two negative, top and bottom. So it has to be a split wire there. Okay, so yeah, you've already sleeved, you have your last couple of wires which have already been cut to length 
the ends stripped, pins crimped on both ends. And the next step now is to measure out where you want the split to be. And I put them at 100 millimeters. Now the splits might be facing different directions. So what I mean is on the 24 pin, you have the split facing that way, hidden right up the power supply end where it's going to be out of sight. On the 8-pin PCIe, obviously you want the split to be out of sight, not right up the end where it plugs into the graphics card. So the split will be facing, will be basically the other way. You know, instead of having the short section as two wires, you have the long section as two wires. So you have one wire coming out for 100 mil, and then it splits out to two wires for the rest of the cable. But yeah, and that's how these two are actually going to be. So we're measuring out to 100 mil, and that's where the split, actually I might do 80 mil for this, and that's where the split is actually going to start. So usually I just put a little mark in it with something. So once you have your mark, you then use a pair of wire strippers, it has to be this type, and you run them right through the insulation. Be careful not to go too small and cut through any of the wire strands, that would be not good. And then five mil away from that, you do it again. So two cuts through the insulation, five mil apart. Then you grab your side cutters, and this is a little bit fiddly, but you run them along the wire and put a slice all the way along that piece. And then you peel it off. And you can actually, if you don't have nails, you can peel it off with the side cutters, but it's just a little bit more risky because you can end up accidentally cutting the strands. So we just have a five millimeter section of the wire exposed. Then we grab another piece of wire, strip the end. And I like to strip the end a little bit longer for this, but roughly five mil, maybe a bit more. But it's a little bit longer than I would normally strip it, you know, if I was going to actually crimp a pin on it. Now I have a technique for this which I don't even know if anyone else uses. I think other people just solder it straight away, but, and that's how I used to do it, but now I've started using another technique. You grab the biggest available pin, which is a Molex pin, and I like to use these Molex female pins they work really nicely for this because they're massive and they're quite a thick and strong pin. And you put both of the wires in there because we're actually going to crimp it onto both of the wires. So you use the insulation crimp on the insulation, you use the contact crimp on the actual wire, you know, just like you normally would. It's a bit fiddly, you know, that's the only problem with this technique, but if you get it right, it's very reliable, and it also makes it really easy to solder, and you almost don't need to solder, but, you know, for the extra strength and the extra contact, I think it's a good idea to still solder. So yeah, you can see how fiddly this is, mainly when you're trying to do it on camera. Okay, now the crimpers are not going to extend or clamp all the way like they normally do, but all crimpers should have a little release. So you can see where my thumb is. I just push the release and they'll open up even if they don't get compressed all the way. Because usually with crimpers, you have to obviously compress them all the way for them to release, otherwise they don't release. If you can't get it to release, it means you can't get it out. Just need to do that again because I wasn't watching properly. Okay, there we go. So that's what it should look like. You know, it's kind of rough, but it doesn't matter because we're not going to rely on that entirely. But it's still, you know, it's all the way around on the insulation and on the wire. So, you know, it's good. That's how it should be. Now you cut off the rest of the pin that you don't need because you only need the crimp part. And you can actually do that beforehand. But I find that it's a little bit easier 
to do it afterwards. Although you have to be very careful not to cut through the wire. But yeah, you just bend it away like that and give yourself a nice gap for the side cutters and aim it somewhere because it's going to go flying. So there we go. We now have our split held in position by a crimp, extremely tight. You can put all the pressure you want on that and it's not going to go anywhere and the contact is good and that's even before it's soldered. Now it's time to solder it as well. So the intention here with soldering this is just to gain a little bit of extra contact and a little bit of extra strength. So yeah, you just want to run all the way around with the solder, make sure it's in all of the gaps and that way the quality is going to be, you know, as good as possible. Yeah, it doesn't really matter entirely what it looks like as long as you have good contact and good strength. You know, that's not going to go anywhere. Now that we have our split cable, we need to make sure that they're both the same length. And I also need to crimp a pin onto the end of the other wire. So I'm just going to cut them exactly the same length. That is extremely important. As you will probably already know, if you've been doing some sleeving, if the lengths are even slightly different, I'm talking one millimeter, you're going to be able to see it from a mile away. It's very frustrating and difficult to deal with later. So you need to put a lot of time into, you know, getting these things right. So then you need to figure out the direction that the pins need to face and you need to face them both the same direction. That's something else that is absolutely critical because if you don't do it later, the cables are going to be all twisted and connectors are going to be pointing in all different directions and it's going to be a real mess. So that's a beautiful crimp. And by the way, a lot of people have asked me about 16 gauge wire, is it necessary? Not entirely. You know, it's not as if 16 gauge wire gives you more performance. It's, the reason I like it is because the wire that I use, the pins that I use, they just all work together so nicely. You know, the 16 gauge wire, you can see, I just did that, you know, really quickly. The pin is dead straight. The crimps are just perfect. Everything works so well with this. And if I drop down to 18, it doesn't work as well. I don't get as tight crimps. I get a bit of a bend in the, in the pin. So, you know, I've developed certain techniques with certain tools and materials that work perfectly. A lot of people ask me, you know, where do we get the connectors and the pins? Well, you know, I hope you guys realize that I do have a store and I do sell all of this on my store. MDPCX sleeve, connectors, pins, wire, all the unusual stuff that you can't find anywhere else. And this is obviously how we fund these videos and the channel. Now a question I've had just recently is about long prong and short prong pins. And you'll notice that this is a short prong ATX pin because the pins wrap around but they don't dig in. Now they don't really need to dig in. And the reason I say that is the insulation is not going to hold the pin on the wire. Not at all. It's just weak plastic. You know, it's just going to, or nylon or whatever it is. It's just going to tear. So as long as these are just neatly wrapped around, they don't have to be digging in. The one that's holding on is this one on the wire that's also giving you the contact. You need to do the pull test on every pin that you crimp on. You need to give it a pull. Don't use all of your strength, just, you know, give it a good, reasonable pull so that you know that you've got good contact and strength there. There is actually a very slight bend in that, but it's no, not a problem at all. So, yeah, if it survives the pull test, if it looks good, you know, the, the pin is in perfect shape, not bent anywhere, 
crimps are wrapped around nicely, well then there's no problem. But it's up to you. If you want to use long prong and have it dig in, you can. Short prong, not have it dig in. Either way, it makes no difference. Only to the way it looks, you know, if anything. So now we're going to get some heat shrink and we're going to put it over the split. Now some people just sleeve straight over this because you are going to have heat shrink here over the sleeve anyway, you know, to hold the split sleeve in position. But I don't like the idea of that because, you know, once the sleeve is on there, how do you know exactly where that split is and that part of that split is not exposed under the sleeve? Because if it is, later on, you might have this resting up against a steel bolt or something on the side of your case somewhere and through the sleeve I mean it doesn't even have to arc it's going to be like literally touching it and then yeah you have problems so please definitely do this under the sleeve put on some heat shrink if you're using MDPC materials the heat shrink is so beautiful and thin anyway that you're just not going to see it so then it's just a simple matter, and I don't think I really need to show you this because you guys will know what to do. But again, you know, just cutting sleeve to length. So what I do here is I run it all the way into the V. And then from this side, you know, it needs to run all the way up so that even when you pull it taut, it is touching right here. So what I do is I actually do this join and then I do the other ends so that this join is the priority and you can get this exactly right. So that in the end, what it looks like, and you do need to use a lot of heat shrink for this, otherwise it's just not gonna hold. You know, you might be thinking, oh, I don't like the look of heat shrink, I want a nice clean little piece so that you can't really see it doesn't work this is just going to pop straight out because there's so much pressure on this that if you've done it properly you know you need to pull your sleeve taut that yeah it's just not enough to hold it you need at least 10 millimeters on each side of the join otherwise it isn't going to work now you can see this one here it's nice and even because they're touching same with that one see that little gap just there that's because they've pulled apart just a tiny little bit so that one must have been really tight and I was probably holding it and then let it go while well, it was still a little bit too warm and there was still a little bit of stretch left in the heat shrink and it's just, you know, pulled apart. A That's only a millimeter just there. But yeah, you can see what I mean about them needing to be pulled all the way together for them to look clean. So that's how you do split wires. I hope this information was useful. Thanks for watching and remember that none of this would be possible without our customers and our patrons.